Hello, my name is Nicholas Ngay, and today I will be presenting our work on distributed and scalable oblivious sorting and shuffling. This is a joint work between me from UC Berkeley and some of my colleagues from UC Santa Cruz and HKUST. Let's start with the motivation for why we're doing this. There's a long line of work showing that while encryption provides confidentiality over our data, it's not itself sufficient to fully protect our data. We generally classify these kinds of attacks into two broad categories. The first is query pattern leakage, where a client's distribution of requests might reveal something about the underlying data. For example, let's say there's a hungry customer making requests to the menu of a malicious restaurant. The more frequently accessed items probably correspond to common items like pizza, while less frequently items are probably less tasty items, let's say like a lobster pudding. On the other side, we have software side channel attacks. Recently, we've seen a large increase in the usage of hardware enclaves, which are secure processors running within untrusted hosts, to be able to process secret data within an untrusted environment, such as in cloud computing. Software side channel attacks generally target code running within hardware enclaves to extract information about the data it's working with. Breaking this down further, we have control flow leakage, where an adversary might observe that a particular if statement branch is taken based on the secret data, and memory access leakage, where an adversary might see that a certain memory access occurs to an array or a map that's dependent on the secret data somehow. The solution to both of these problems is oblivious algorithms. These are algorithms whose query patterns, control flow, and memory accesses are independent from the data that they're computing upon, which mitigates the classes of attacks that we see here. Let's say a real-world use case of this. Uh, Signal is a popular messaging platform that aims to provide a high degree of privacy to its users. Some of you watching this today probably use Signal already. They have a use case known as private contact discovery where basically when you join the app, they want to be able to show you who else in your contacts list uses Signal as well. The server shouldn't be able to learn what the client's contacts are, but the client also shouldn't be able to learn the extra contacts that are stored on the server. In other words, this is basically a private set intersection problem with the clients and the server's contacts lists as the sets. Signal here uses an oblivious algorithm based on two recent works in the literature, Oblix and Snoopy, to conceal access patterns from the server while efficiently performing those private set intersection. And they build these within Intel SGX as their hardware enclave technology. And that's not the only one. There are a bunch of other applications that are seeing adoption today or in the near future that use oblivious algorithms. For example, oblivious algorithms can be used to anonymize Google's key transparency in order to conceal clients' queries from the server. Searchable encryption is used in database contexts like ProtonMail or MongoDB in order to efficiently scan encrypted data. Big Data can also use oblivious algorithms for privacy-preserving data analytics, which companies like OPAC are working on. Differential privacy is used by companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon to collect and analyze user data. Uh, Google also has their own Proclo system, uh, introducing the shuffle model of differential privacy, um, which requires an oblivious shuffle primitive and allows companies to collect data from users without identifying them. And there's, they also have their privacy sandbox initiative, uh, which uses oblivious constructions as well. LLMs, which I'm sure you've heard a ton about, can also use oblivious algorithms to conceal input queries to language models to protect user privacy without compromising functionality. Now, just like non-oblivious applications have non-oblivious primitives that they build off of, all of these kinds of oblivious applications are built upon oblivious primitives as well. We have oblivious primitive constructions on everything from search indexes to key value lookup and graph processing and so on and so forth. And again, similar to their non-oblivious counterparts, these primitives often rely on fundamental building blocks. And of course, the most fundamental of them all, and certainly the most stereotypical, is sorting, as well as the closely related problem of shuffling. There's a bunch of work in this field, including Batcher's very old 1968 paper to recent shuffling works that have come out in CCS 22 and 23. But there's something that's missing so far from these building blocks in our literature. And that problem is one of scalability. Previously existing sorting and shuffling primitives simply don't scale well when you scale them up massively. Most of the solutions that we mentioned on the previous slide test only up to four gigabytes in their evaluations, and very few of them actually target the distributed setting directly. Our contribution directly addresses this hole in the literature. We provide fully oblivious, distributed, and scalable sorting and shuffling primitives. Our evaluations test sort sizes up to 128 gigabytes in the distributed environment with up to 64 enclaves, which is the largest distributed evaluation of oblivious sorting to our knowledge. And it achieves all of this in less than a minute. At the end, we're also going to show that our new oblivious scalable 
sorting primitive can be used to enable new higher level primitives as well. And we achieve a nearly 7x throughput increase over Snoopy with the right hardware. So how did we arrive at this? The subject of this talk is going to be four of the key optimizations that we made all across different layers of design and implementation, algorithmic, network level, and low level or assembly level. So let's start with the the first thing that we did was to iterate on Batcher's well-known Bitonic sorting algorithm. This is a very, very commonly used algorithm for oblivious sorting, mainly because it has this very simple deterministic behavior where we execute the exact same set of pairwise swaps in order to sort the data. Now, because the, the behavior is deterministic, it doesn't depend on any input data, which, makes, which is why it's oblivious. It has this recursive construction. So what we do here is we first sort each half of the array using a Bitonic sort, which has a series of swaps looking like this. And then we do a bitonic merge, which looks like this. And the end result is a sorted array. Now building on top of this, we applied multi-threading optimizations, and we worked to mitigate the effect of network latency by batching swap requests made between enclaves. The end result of this was that we arrived at the fastest implementation of the bitonic sort to our knowledge. But even with this, what we found that the shortcomings what we found was that the shortcomings of the Bitonic sort were simply too fundamental to overcome. It suffers from limited spatial locality and thus too much network communication across enclaves. And it simply has this non-optimal n log squared on runtime to begin with, which we don't really like. So to improve the scalability and performance further, we turned our attention to the bucket oblivious sort instead. And after applying the optimizations, we call it the debucket sort here. Bucket sort is a little more complicated, so we'll go through it a little bit more slowly. First, we actually need to shuffle the input data. We do this by assigning a random number to each element, like this, and then we route each element towards its final sorted position according to that random number using a bucket butterfly routing network. In this case, each bucket holds elements according to the first two bits of the random key, so 0, 0, then 0, 1, and so on and so forth. Then we can randomly permute each individual bucket to achieve a fully random permutation. After this, you can apply any old comparison-based sort on the shuffled output from earlier. And this is oblivious since the behavior of the comparison-based sort depends only on the ordering of the input elements. And since we shuffled the input elements earlier, we actually don't depend on the input data in any way. Now, improving on this, there are three optimizations that we implement and evaluate in order to improve the scalability of bucket sort. The first thing that we need to do is to shuffle the arrows on the original butterfly network slightly. If you look at the original arrangement of this network, we end up writing pairs of buckets to locations that are actually different from where they started. For example, the, two, the first and third buckets on the second layer here end up getting written to the first and second buckets on the third layer, which isn't great if you're actually trying to write code to implement this in memory. If instead we route buckets through the butterfly network such that the two destination buckets are the same as the two source buckets, we can minimize the amount of thrashing in memory that happens since we write back to the same locations in memory that we read from. Uh, if you're familiar with caching behavior, you'll know that minimizing the contention of cache lines between threads is incredibly important. So this is especially important as part of improving the multi-threaded scalability of our algorithm. And because this pattern of operations is still deterministic, this modification preserves the obliviousness of bucket sort. Next is an improvement to the merge split operator, which is the little circle operator here at the heart of the butterfly network. In more detail, it takes in two buckets and it outputs two buckets sorted by one of the bits of its random keys. The main thing here is that the last step uses an oblivious sort to sort all zero elements before one elements. Traditionally, we use bitonic sort to achieve this, but our observation here is that the, an oblivious sort is actually unnecessary. Since we're just separating zeros and ones, all we really need here is an oblivious compaction rather than a full-on oblivious sort. There's a very efficient com oblivious compaction algorithm that came out in CCS22 by Sassy et al. that we can leverage here. Finally, we can see here that distributing the bucket butterfly network across multiple enclaves leads to this non-optimal behavior where in the last log E layers, all of these red arrows are network communication swapping elements across enclaves. But this actually isn't necessary. After just the first log E layers of the butterfly network, we observe that we actually already know everything that we need in order to determine what a given bucket's final enclave position will be. In other words, we never actually need to swap elements across enclaves more than once. So here's what we do instead. We still start by performing log E layers of the butterfly network as before, but then we add this additional rearrangement step to send all buckets to the correct enclave all at once. 
After this, we can resume the remaining layers of the butterfly network in order to complete the oblivious shuffle without incurring any additional network overhead. Since buckets are only ever sent over the network at most once, this reduces the network communication to just O of n. And again, because this rearrangement step is fully deterministic, we still preserve the obliviousness of bucket sort. Next, we'll move on to some of the work that we did at the network fabric itself in order to maximize performance and maintain security in the form of encrypted NPI. Any distributed system is going to need some way for nodes in the system to communicate with each other. In a setting of distributed computation, we can generally assume that all nodes are directly reachable from one another. For a distributed setting of oblivious computation, we're going to need an additional layer of security for hardware enclaves to communicate with one another. We wanted to use MPI, or the message passing interface, to implement this kind of communication, since it's a very common interface used for distributed programming, but we found no existing solutions that provided a sufficient level of security. Now, there are generally three properties that we'd like from our network fabric, security, ease of use, and performance. All prior works in secure enclave-to-enclave -enclave communication suffer from missing at least one of these elements. TLS, for example, while generally regarded as secure and easy to use, requires serializing all messages into a byte stream and results in performance degradation, especially in the multi-threaded case. Datagram TLS, or DTLS, resolves this issue, but its sharp edges and its specification to try to fit it into a well-known programming model means it trades off ease of use. Meanwhile, NPI, which we discussed earlier, has no built-in mechanisms to provide security, even though it's very fast and very easy to use. While there is some work to try to build in a security layer um, on top of MPI, all of these solutions still fall victim to well-known attacks like replay attacks. As part of this work, we introduce our own novel encrypted MPI layer that satisfies all of these properties for the first time. Finally, let's talk about some of the low-level assembly optimizations that we made to improve efficiency. One of the most common building blocks that we see in oblivious algorithms is the oblivious swap operator. This is a very, very simple operation that does exactly one thing. It either swaps two values with each other, or it doesn't. Traditionally, we use x86-specific assembly instructions like CMove, or its AVX2 equivalents like VPBlendVB, which are inherently oblivious since the instruction is always executed at the assembly level, just that the instruction itself has conditional semantics. We propose a novel usage of the well-known XOR swap in order to use it as our oblivious swap operator instead of CMove and friends. By adding an additional AND that makes the second step in the XOR swap conditional, we made it such that it either swaps the elements or it's a no-op. In other words, an oblivious swap. This, had, this has advantages in both usability and performance. First off, it's incredibly portable since you can express the XOR logic above in pure C rather than having to write architecture-specific instructions to perform the oblivious swap. This also means that it supports all existing vector and scalar widths, including those not supported by CMove operations like 8-bit operations and 512-bit operations with AVX512. Though we weren't able to test AVX512 in our evaluation due to limitations in the Open Enclave SDK that we used. Plus, other architectures like RISC-V have an interesting architecture letting you have variable length vectors at the assembly level, which C can just easily compile down to without programmer intervention. Finally, it's well known that inline assembly can trip up optimizing compilers, and this architecture agnostic C implementation makes it much easier for optimizing compilers to optimize our code. Putting all of this together, let's talk a bit about performance and evaluation. To compare our solution against prior works, we use Azure Confidential Computing Machines, which provide Intel SGX v2 as the hardware enclave technology. These run either 4 or 8 core Intel Xeon CPUs, each with up to 64 gigabytes of memory, including 32 gigabytes of protected enclave memory. We compare against our own already optimized Bytonic sort implementation from earlier, as well as the OR shuffle algorithm introduced recently in CCS22. And we use Snoopy as our baseline for oblivious distributed key value lookup. All of this is implemented in about 10,000 lines of C on top of Open Enclave as the hardware enclave SDK, MPitch as the MPI layer, and Embed TLS for cryptographic operations. Starting with sorting, we see that while Bytonic sort still outperforms debucket sort with one or even two enclaves, our debucket sort starts to outperform better with four or more enclaves. And by the time we reach 64 enclaves, we achieve a nearly 7x speed up over the Bytonic sort with the same hardware, on top of the fact that our Bytonic sort is, is itself already faster than previous implementations that we've seen. With our larger 128 gigabyte dataset, 
We maintain about the same level of speed up at around 5.4x as well. Our scalability really starts to show when you increase the number of enclaves and observe the scaling behavior. When we increase from 1 to 64 enclaves, we achieve a nearly 21 times speed up, whereas both Bitonic Sort and Aura Shuffle are only about breaking even with the single threaded performance with that level of parallelism. And looking at the multi threading side of things, even when we're at 32 enclaves, we still scale very well if you increase the number of threads per enclave. Scaling up to 8 threads results in a 6.3x speed up despite the highly distributed setting. Overall, this lets us obliviously sort 2 gigabytes of data in less than a second and 128 gigabytes of data in less than a minute, showing that our oblivious sorting solution is indeed highly distributed and highly scalable. The story is pretty much the same with Oblivious Shuffling. We actually outperform Aura Shuffle even in the single enclave case, which probably owes to the memory and assembly optimizations that we made. And we see a nearly 10x speedup over Aura Shuffle with 64 enclaves, and nearly 9x in the same 128GB dataset. Finally, we achieve immense speedup when we add either more enclaves or more threads than distributed settings, similar to Oblivious Shuffling. We get a 16x speedup when increasing from 1 to 64 enclaves, and a 6.6x speedup when increasing from 1 thread to 8. Since shuffling is faster than sorting for us, we can shuffle 2 gigabytes of data in a little over half a second, and 128 gigabytes of data in a little over half a So likewise, our Oblivious Shuffling solution is also highly distributed and highly scalable. We also have some pretty interesting micro benchmarks here if you're curious about the impact when we break down some of the optimizations that we made. We can see here that the OR Compact Merge Split optimization achieves a, up to 3.28 speedup in the single enclave setting. XOR based Oblivious Swap achieves an up to 1.7x speedup again in the single enclave setting. And the O of N bucket routing gets us an up to 2.87 speedup in the distributed setting, which we would expect to see increase as we add more and more enclaves as well. Finally, let's see an application of a scalable oblivious sort operator by turning it into a scalable oblivious batched key value lookup. Snoopy is a prior work that we'll be comparing against, which currently sees use in Signal's private contact discovery application that we discussed earlier. The results from their papers indicate that Snoopy can achieve up to 130,000 QPS with a database size of 2 million objects, but our testing indicates that this throughput drastically decreases as the dataset size increases, dropping to just 4,000 requests per second with up to 16 million objects. What can we do now that we have a scalable oblivious sort operator? Here's our construction for a simple batched key value lookup, which we've called Snoopy++. We first sort the requests and the data together, and then we perform a linear scan over this combined set of data and requests in order to copy data from the data into the requests. And then we perform an oblivious compaction to get the requests back out. The latency of the system is basically determined by the scalability and the size of the sort. So a scalable oblivious sort leads us directly to a scalable key value lookup algorithm, as long as the sort time is less than our target latency. If the latency is, say, 1,000 milliseconds, then for a database of 16 million elements, we can achieve this using just 32 8-thread enclaves. And while Snoopy is only able to respond to 4,000 requests per second, according to our testing with the same hardware, we're able to get up to 700,000 requests per second. There are many intricacies to this which we detail in the paper, but as long as you have sufficient hardware to meet the target latency, Snoopy++ is an incredibly scalable and efficient option here. So, in conclusion, we construct oblivious sorting and shuffling primitives that are highly distributed and highly scalable. They outperform prior works by up to almost 10x in the distributed setting, and scale very efficiently as you add more and more hardware. And they both improve the performance of existing applications and enable the construction of novel applications due to their inherent scalability, which we demonstrated in the form of Snoopy++. The code is available at this QR code if you'd like to take a look at the implementation, and thank you very much for your time.